Good day. Welcome to Light Embassy Taking His Glory to the Ends of the World. Today's devotional is caption They are no priest to you. They are no priests to you. And our team scripture is taken from Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Please, I'm reading from the KJV. It says, And he had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Say, and he had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. It is the Christian who has rather been made a king. The Christian rather has made a priest to God. He doesn't need any man to be his priest. The Christians rather have been made priest unto God. And this was done through Jesus Christ. There are some Christians and denominations that refer to their fivefold ministers as priests. They refer to the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, teacher, and pastor as priests. This is a total contradiction to the gospel of the Lord Jesus. It's wrong and goes against everything that Jesus came to do. It is wrong to refer to your pastor as a priest. It is wrong to refer to the clergyman as a priest. There is no priest in the church. No Christian is a priest to another. It is wrong to refer to one Christian as your priest. Where in the New Testament do you see the Christians or the disciples referring to Paul, Peter, and those apostles as their priests? Where? So where do they get these doctrines from? It is because of a wrong understanding and they want to bring something in the Old Testament into the New Testament. No, the Old Testament has been abrogated. The traditions of the Old Testament has been abrogated. We are in the New Testament. You don't need the old when there is a new. When he tells you there is a new, he is trying to tell like in the, the, in the Hebrew writer will say. He says, because there is a new, it, it just try, it, 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 it therefore tells you, you see, it therefore tells you that the old is ready to be disannulled. Don't live, don't live by the traditions and ordinances of men. Live by the truth of God's word. Where? Where? Where in the New Testament? Where in the book of Acts? Where in the epistles do you find the fivefold ministers being referred to as priests to the church? It is wrong to refer to any minister of the gospel as your priest. It is wrong. No Christian is a priest to another. No one is to stand between you and God now that you are a Christian. You don't need any mediator between you and God. You don't need any man to mediate between you and God. No man is a priest to you. You don't have to offer prayers or make confessions to or through any man, woman, or angel. Every Christian has a direct access to God. Now that the Holy Ghost dwells in every Christian, you don't need a priest. There is a high priest called the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the high priest. And all the Christians have been made priests. To still call another man your priest is to believe in the Old Testament tradition which has been abrogated. You are a child of God now and have direct access to your father. You don't need any man priest when the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit now is your access to God. You don't need any man to mediate. You don't need any man to be a priest or woman or angel. He is your direct access to God, the Holy Ghost. It is because of this ignorance that some Christians are being exploited and manipulated. They have become beggarly in their faith. This is total ignorance. 
you have direct access to God and need no man preached. That is why Jesus came. That's what he came to he came to do. That's why it is good news. That's the meaning of good news. That may mean of, of the gospel. You don't need access any man to, to, to be your access to God. You now have direct access to God. That is the good news in Christianity. When you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17 to 18, it says, And he came, he Jesus came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. He says he came to preach peace to both the Jews and the Gentiles. That's what it means. Those who were, were afar off were the Gentiles. Those who were nigh were the Jews. He says, And he came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. Then he goes on to say, For through him, we both, that is both the Jews and the Gentiles, have access. By who? By a man? No, he said, by, we have access by one spirit unto the Father. He didn't say we have access by any priest or man to the Father or woman to the Father. He says you have one access by one spirit, by the Holy Ghost to the Father. The Holy Ghost is your access to God now that you are a Christian. No man is supposed to be your access to God. And since the Holy Ghost lives in you, Always, Jesus says, when he comes, he will dwell in you forever. It means you have a direct access to God forever, any moment, any time, any second. You don't need any man to be your access to God. Now that you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need any man priest. It is a total disrespect. Yes, many Christians don't get it. It is a total disrespect to walk with the Holy Ghost in you to a man to be your priest or your access to God. It's a total disrespect to the Holy Ghost. It just shows that Christians have not been properly taught. The fivefold ministers are not priests to the church. They are to lead the church and to build the Christians in the word. When you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13, he says, And he gave, he, Jesus, gave some, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what? He says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He spells out the role and the purpose of the fivefold ministry. Nowhere did he say they were given to the church to serve as priest to the church. When you read in any part of the Word of God, you let in the New Testament, you know, the fivefold ministers, the apostles, the pastors, the prophets, and teachers, we have been given to you to build you in the way, so that you grow spiritually to become like Jesus. They are not to serve as priests to you. So when you call your pastor as a priest, your teacher, prophet as a priest, it's total ignorance. The clergyman is not a priest. You are a priest. Or every Christian is a priest. The fact that something has been done for years or centuries doesn't make it truth. It's not true because it has been in office for so long. Truth is the word of God. Truth is the word of God. There are Christians who have been living by opinions and traditions of men for years, thinking it to be the word of God. You don't need any priest. Rather, all Christians are now priests to the world, to the unbelievers. Now, every Christian is a priest. Every Christian is a priest, and you are a priest to the world. So when you read First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It says, You are a royal priesthood. John says, He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. No man is a priest to you. You have straight and direct access to God. That is the meaning of Christianity. That is the meaning of good news. That is the meaning of glad tidings. That is what makes the New Testament greater 
than the Old Testament. You have direct access to God. You don't need to go to the temple. You don't need to go to Jerusalem now for the priest to mediate between you and God. You don't need that now. You don't need to turn your face towards Jerusalem to pray now. If you needed priests, you, you have been doing, you have to do all those things again. You don't need any priests now. That is why you can stand anywhere, any place, any time and pray to your father and talk to your father. You don't need any man as a priest. Those teachings that make people pray through other men, they pray through angels, they pray through women. It's ignorance. It's not truth. It's not truth. Where do you see it in the Word of God? Where do you see it in the New Testament? Did you see Peter? Did you see Paul? Did you see any disciples in the book of Acts or in the entire New Testament praying through any woman? Do you, did you see Paul, Peter, and the... And all these disciples in the Old Testament, sorry, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, please, did you see any of them praying through any dead saint? So where did you get it from? If what they are teaching you is true, you should see it in the early church. You should see it in the New Testament. You should see it with the early disciples, Peter, Paul, James, and John. You should see it with Stephen. You should see it with Philip. With all those wonderful Prince La Aquila, all those, all those, all those great disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see it in any of the New Testament books, like the epistles or the book of Acts? You don't see even one example of any Christian in the Bible, in the New Testament, whether the epistles or the book of Acts, praying through a dead saint, or praying through an angel, or praying through a woman. Where did you get it from? So what is the basis? What is the basis of you doing that? When you don't see that with the early saints, with the early Christians, when you don't see that with Paul, when you don't see that with Peter, when you don't see it with John, when you don't see it with James, when you don't see it with Stephen, when you didn't see it with the early church, why then do you do that? Let's live by the word of God and go by truth. But when Jesus comes, you are not going to justify because you, you will tell him that you were taught that way. He will ask you, was it in the word of God? When the Sadducees came to Jesus, they, have, they were a sect. They have been in Israel for a lot of years. They have believed that there wasn't any angel. They have believed that there wasn't any spirit. Man was not a spirit. They have believed. They have their own doctrines. And they came and asked Jesus a question in Matthew chapter 22. What did Jesus say? He says, you err because you don't know the scriptures. That day, if you were led wrongly, he's going to ask you, did you go to the word of God to check it out for yourself? And that is why in the Bible, he tells, he told, in Revelation chapter 1, he told the Ephesian Christians, he says that you prove, you prove those who call themselves apostles and who were not, who I didn't send. And were liars and Jesus recommended them he commended them he commended them for doing that he says prove all things hold fast to that which is good you are to do the proving he says you have to do the proving. how do you prove it you prove things by the word of God you prove things by the word of God God bless you